the neural tissues yes the neurons neural tissues Neural tissues composed of the neurons and the glial cells. So what are these? I'm sure you have heard about the neurons, but what are the glial cells? I'll teach you today. Okay, so neurons, main cells of the neural tissues and the glial cells, glia is basically glue. It has come from the word glue. Mainly supportive in nature. Glial cells, they are supportive in nature. Fine. Can you tell me the neural tissues, they develop, they generally develop from which uh, germ layer? ectoderm okay now the neural tissue if i talk more about it contains specialized excitable cells called neurons this is absolutely important excitable cells these cells can be excited they can what transmit electrical impulses neuroglial cells constitute the rest of the neural system let me show you here okay look at the image properly fine so they are able to conduct neural impulses okay basically in form of electrical impulse you can consider glial cells they are supportive in function okay got it well first let's talk about the neuron basic structural functional unit of the neural tissues let me show you see a network of neurons as you can see on the screen fine I'm sure you have seen this in many movies, many movies, right? What is neuroglia? The glial cells see the types. The types, astrocytes, Schwann cells, oligodendrocytes, and the microglia. What are they? I'll tell you. First, astrocytes. What are they? The name suggests astro. Yes, you understand. It should be something astro. Star-shaped cells. Helps in defense and repair of the nervous tissues. Got it? Why astrocytes? Name? They're star shaped. Fine. And they help in defense, defense and repair of the neural tissues. Got it? They also do provide mechanical support to the neurons. Now, what are the Schwann cells? Well, helps forming an insulating layer around the neurons. This layer is called the myelin sheath. See it here. Do you see the Schwann cells? And they help in forming an insulating layer around the neurons. Do see the insulating layer. Okay. It's called the myelin sheath. It serves as an insulating layer. Fine. Got it. So Swan Schwann cells. Fine. Let me move on to the next one. Okay. Oligodendrocytes. What are they? Oligodendrocytes. Consist of several cytoplasmic projections. Cytoplasmic projections that extend to many neurons. Let me show you. See, do you see the oligodendrocytes? Many projections and then extend you to many different neurons, correct? They also help in formation of the myelin sheath. Got it? Fine. So they have fewer and shorter cellular processes, okay? They are projections which extend to many neurons, help in also help in the formation of the myelin sheath. Now we are left with the microglia. Okay. Microglia, what are they? What are they now? They are small and help in phagocytosis. What is that? Phagocytosis, it's this. Smallest neuroglial cells. These are the smallest neuroglial cells. Look at the image. They can engulf and destroy microbes. They can engulf and destroy microbes. And since they are engulfing and then destroying, this process is basically phagocytosis. Well, you know what? Thank you for the support. So this is these are the words by the neurons because you know neuron, it's a star, of course. It's a star, of course, but the star is never a star without their fans. Do you accept this? Right? Do you believe this? If someone is a famous personality or a star, right? Star cannot be a star if he or she does not have any fans. Right? Okay, so of course the star should thank all the supportive cells. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our star. Well, so let's talk about this parts of the neuron. Neuron, major two parts, the cyton and the cytoplasmic processes. Okay, let me first talk about the cyton. Very, very important structure. Yes, please carefully. 
follow this. Cyton. The cell body is called cyton or the pericarion. Okay. Soma or the pericarion. Consists of the cytoplasm called the neu neuroplasm. Sorry. It's called the neuroplasm and with a central nucleus. Let me show you the picture. Do you see the central nucleus? Yes. Cyton. Correct. The cell body. It's the cyton or the pericarion. It contains the neuroplasm. Fine. Well, this cytoplasm that you're seeing over here, I'm talking about, right? They contain the, of course, this is the neuroplasm. It contains the nucleus, mitochondria, Golgi bodies, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes. These are all present over here. Nissel's granules, have you ever heard about this? Let me show you first. Do you see the dotted black dark structures? This is a microscopic view, you know? Yeah. So, Nissel's granules characterize characteristics deeply stained particles present in the neuroplasm. These are called the Nissel's granules. Okay. Nissel's granules, these are irregular mass of rough endoplasmic reticulum and free ribosomes. Okay. They can be easily viewed when you are staining it. This name, Nissel's granule, was came up because, or for, rather from its discoverer known as named as Franz Nissel. Okay, got it? So these are the granules present in the neuroplasm. Great. Talking about, so this was about the cyto. Talking about the cytoplasmic processes, dendrites and the axon. Let's see what are they. First dendrites, short branched process. Receives impulse from the adjacent neurons and transfers them to the cyton. Where are they? Let me show you. Hey, do you see? Do you see them? Okay. Do you see them? Wow. It's, it's, it's like, so th these are neural signals which are passing. Okay. Take a look. Take a proper look. So, dendro dendrites, sorry, the dendrites, these are short, they are branched processes. They receive impulse from the adjacent neurons and then transfer to the cyton and then again the conduction will happen. Okay. Fine. So, if I just try to draw it, it's like these, okay? These, these, these are the dendrites. Fine. Well, great. Which is the axon? Let me show you axon first. Yes. The single long projection arising from the cell body. The long projection. Single long projection, that's the axon. Conducts impulse from the cyton to the adjacent neurons. So you see, the cyton is here. Okay, the cell body, the dendrites are here. From the dendrites will receive the signals from the adjacent neurons. And through the cyton, it will pass then into the axon and then to the terminus, end of the neuron. Got it? So, it helps in conduction of the impulse. Got it? So at the terminal end, do you see some branching and do you see some knobs right this here? Bulb-like small, bulb-like structures. Okay. You know what? Each branch end shows swelling. That's what I was talking about. At the tip region called the synaptic knob. This is very important. These synaptic knobs, they contain certain chemicals. Okay. They contain chemicals. You'll hear about this term later on, neurotransmitters. Okay. So... They certain have some chemicals which help in the conduction of the impulse, the electric impulse through chemicals from one neuron to the next neuron, to the dendrites of the next neuron. Got the concept? Okay. So synaptic knob. Okay. The swelling. Great. If I classify the neurons, so let me classify based on the presence or the absence of myelin sheath. It can be myelinated. Of course, if it has myelin, unmyelinated. First, let me show you myelin sheet. Is there an advantage? What is the function? Myelinated neurons, axons, show the presence of myelin sheath. Myelin sheath increases, please note this down, the velocity of conduction of the impulse. Yes, yes. So, so, so this will increase the velocity of the conduction of impulse. Myelin. The myelin sheath, presence of myelin sheath. Why and how? The question. Look at the structure. Look at the structure, okay? 
Now look at this one and try to relate to this. What do you understand? This animal is hopping, right? Let me just imagine. If I'm just running, okay, if I'm just okay, let me let me see. If I'm just walking, okay, my footsteps will be smaller. Each step step will be smaller. Then I'm running. If I'm running, then the step will become a bit more. Now, if I'm jumping and going like this, which one will be faster? Jumping, right? I'm covering the distance quite fast. I'm jumping. I don't have to walk all through the length. I'm just jumping. Correct? So, similarly here. Here, the neural, the neural signal jumps from node, one node to another. So, it's much faster. Okay? It's, it's much faster. So, the points that are devoid of the myelin sheath are called the nodes of Ranvier. Ranvier, okay? Nodes of Ranvier. These areas serve as points where the impulse can travel through the neurons. Do you see the nodes of Ranvier? Fine. Here, the myelin sheath is not present. These are nodes. Now, the signal will jump from here to here, then to here, then to here. Let me do it below. From here to here, from here to here. You do here. So it's jumping. It's much faster. Correct? Okay. Now let me show you unmyelinated. Then you will understand much more. Unmyelinated. So these are the neurons which are devoid of myelin sheath, of course. Speed of the nerve impulse transmission is slower. And this is the reason. Because the nerve impulse has to travel throughout the length. And just imagine if the nodes were present. If the myelin sheath was present, then what would have happened? It, 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 it need not travel all through this. You could have just done. Correct? Just jumped across. Fine? So here transition is slower. 